Hello and welcome to the Science Fiction Book Review Podcast. My name is Luke Burridge and this is the show where I review every single science fiction book that I read as I read it. No set schedule, you know the drill. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit about a book which is the third book in a series of books. And this is one of those cases where I reckon I can... uh, don't have to worry about spoiling the previous two books in the series when talking about this one because um, each one of the books in this series seems to kind of take different characters like minor or side characters from the previous books, put them into a different situation and then head off in a different direction and the books kind of stand alone pretty well by themselves even if you do need to have uh, uh, read the previous books for them to make a lot of sense but not sense as in story-wise but sense as in uh, like world building and stuff anyway the book that I'm going to talk about today is the third book in the Spatagy series by Neil Asher it's called Orbus and I reviewed the uh, previous books um, a few years ago and um, the Spatagy is uh, I you know when it's called the Spatagy series you think well what is Spatagy? Spatagy starts off being a a place a planet and it's an ocean planet with lots of small islands and archipelagos and things like that. Um, but what makes this uh, planet really uh, unique is that um, anyone who goes there and is bitten by a kind of leech gets what's called the Spatagee virus. And the Spatagee virus uh, like has lots of benefits. It's got some uh, massive neg- neg- negatives as well, but... Uh, uh, some benefits being that um, the DNA of this this virus, of this leech virus, um, slowly replaces your own DNA and makes you much more powerful and much stronger. And as decades go by, it replaces parts of your body matter with kind of a more indestructible, indestructible version of your own body matter. So you stay human, but things start changing about you. And uh, at the very beginning uh, of the history, the human history of the Spatagee, um, some Praedor, which is some other alien race, brought some humans to Spatagee infected with this, envi- this virus, and they were like, right, okay, this is gonna, um, this is gonna make these people very powerful, or lo- other stuff happens. Anyway, th- this led to what led to what is known as the um, as the uh, captains, and the captains are the people who uh, were decades, then centuries old, these super powerful um, humans. And you think, oh, this is great. What what could go wrong here? Well, what can go wrong is actually you, you start losing your human uh, cognition and your human emotions and uh, changes you in different ways. And you've got to, like, not uh, let this uh, go too far, because if, if it lets you go too far, um, you lose all your humanity uh, or any humanity that might have left. And the first book in this series was called The Skinner, and it was um, one of the, the, the bad gribblers in this book was, uh, in this first book, was someone who had gone too far and become a monster, and they're like, right, we've got we to sort this monster out. Um, there are other bad things and not bad things, but it, it's like a pirate. That first book was all pirate adventure, kind of like, let's head off on sailing ships and other ships into the sea and see what happens. The second book, similar setting, hey, let's go off into the Spatagee uh, planet at sea. This book was called The Voyage of the Sable Keach. And uh, yeah, other stuff going on there as well. And there's always been this big ba- backdrop of um, the polity worlds, which I guess is other books by Neil Asher. is also talking about this different war between these um, humans and the uh, the Praedor. Uh, there's a big battles have gone on in the past and things. Uh, I haven't read any of the books in the Praedor like world or in the polity world. Sorry, um, which I'm sure I'll get to someday. But this is these are kind of like these little stand standalone little books over in this just this one little planet. Um, and uh, yeah, the second book kind of follows some different minor characters from the first book. Some characters do continue on. And then this book, the third book, is called Orbus because apparently the main character, if a book's called Orbus, you'd think, well, the main character is Captain Orbus that we met in the previous book. And I would say that, yeah, sure, it is. He is a main character, but I'm not really sure why the book is called Orbus because he he's just a... Um, again, not a side character, but certainly not the main character who's driving the plot. The main character who's driving the plot isn't um, from Spatagee. It's a Praedor, uh, one of these kind of gribbly aliens uh, uh, from, you know, the previous books. And, and he was on the planet and he's got... Um, he has become uh, infected with this virus. And then he heads back into space. Again, don't want to spoil it too much for what happens in the end of the second book. But the book pretty much, catch, you know, takes up with... Keech, this Praedor infected with, um, who is sort of like a, uh, uh, the grand, 
daughter, no, like a, a, a small child of the the Praedor king, which is kind of like a hive mother, kind of like only one person in charge of everything kind of position. And uh, yeah, and he goes into this like the no go zone, the, the um, what's it called, the boneyards or the junkyard or whatever it's called, between the human space and uh, Praedor space, between the polity space, which is run by artificial intelligences, um, and the Praedor space, and it goes into that place and. Um, yeah, and it's then the, the, the Praedor king is like, hey, we got, I've got to stop this person coming back, this Praedor coming back, he's a bit too powerful. He killed off the second in line, or the next in line, to the Praedor throne, and we've got to get it sorted out. Meanwhile, another ship is like, hey, we're going somewhere to pick up some stuff or to make a delivery, and uh, also in the boneyard, and Orbus comes along, because he's like, hey, I need a captain. And Orbis is a ship captain, and uh, an AI isn't allowed to, you know, control a ship without a human captain, maybe, I guess that's the thing. Um, so Orbis comes along, and Orbis' first mate comes along as well, and kind of like a stowaway, but not really a stowaway. They were cargo deliveries, but the two war drones, Sniper and Thirteen, two war drones from the previous book. Sniper's been a character in all three books. He's like the main through thread. A, a polity war drone uh, comes along for the ride as well. So you get this like intersection, like, okay, a Praedor ship is on the run, um, but it needs to be, you know, tracked down by this, you know, the Praedor king and the polity kind of manipulate the ship into going in and sorting out this thing, even though they can't send in a, an official um, ship, uh, official uh, polity uh, war vessel into this demilitarized zone in between it. So all of the rest of the book plays out with like, OK, what's going on with the Spatter J virus? But none of it actually takes place on Spatter J itself. So I realised actually the Spatter J series isn't so much a Spatter J series about the planet, it's about the virus and what it does to humans and then what it does to like life on Spatter J and also what it does to the Praedor. And the rest of this book is like almost just one space battle, or not one space battle, but like one battle in a in a war, like one encounter. So like you've got like also there's another Praedor um uh, personality who turns up, which is the the is it the Golgoroth and um, who and the Golgoroth is like this uh, Praedor, which even though the daddy Praedors eat baby Praedors all the time to scare the Brady pa- Praedors who could be eaten at any time, they say, oh, don't say anything, or otherwise the Golgoroth will uh, come and eat you. And it's like, well, if Golgoroth's good, if you're going to eat me, what's worse than the Golgoroth coming anyway? Anyway, the Golgoroth turns up. The the bad gribbly, even for the Praedor, turns up. So you've got, like, this, like, four-slash-five-way space battle with the Praedor King, the Praedor, the Polity AIs, the, uh, the you know, the, the Spatter J, um captain infected captains and the and the drones coming along here the Golgoroth and you know all these different factions playing out and another faction which comes in too um which is uh, by you know which, which is actually more to do with the Spatter J virus and where that comes from and uh, and the aliens who kind of created the Spatter J virus in the first place and it does wrap up the entire Spatter J story we do find out where the Spatter J virus comes from what the ultimate uh, extent of it is and how dangerous it's going to be and like what the stakes are if it gets out into the wider galaxy even though it isn't it has been lit out into the wider galaxy but not in a in a big like a, in a, in a wide ranging um uncontrolled fashion um so yeah it's a the whole book plays out just sort of like the question of what the Spatter J virus is and then a battle to solve everything. And I really enjoyed all parts of that, except for the fact that I thought went into the book thinking I was going to read another um, uh, space pirate adventure on a planet. So like pirates and sailing ships and like, but really pirates and, and captains and sailing ships on, on a, on a alien, a very, very alien and very, very interesting planet. Um, and but I didn't get any more Spatter J Planet. I got a lot more Spatter J Virus, and I got a lot more Pradar War, and a lot more human stuff, and a lot more space battles than I was expected. There was a bit of space battles at the end of the previous book, but this is mostly a space battle all the way through to the end. It does resolve all the characters. It does resolve all the questions. Orbus, though, is sort of like just along for the ride. His name is on the book. It might as well have been called um, this guy or <laughs> whatever. So. Um, yeah, a little bit unsatisfied, thinking that it was going to be a story about 
um, Spatter J captains on the Spatter J planet, and it turned out to be, oh no, artificial intelligences, aliens, and uh, war drones. Um, but again, Sniper is a fun character. And the the characters, the Praetor characters, always sort of like just seem to be bad gribblers before. But as, again, as they have to interact in a more human way uh, and infected with the Spatter J virus in a more kind of Spatter J kind of way, like long term considerations, like thinking about relationships less as like my, my offspring are my food if I want them, and more sort of like, oh, this is actually these people, uh, people, these Predor have to be more important. Their, their characters do evolve, and, uh, and, and the same kind of thing happens with Sniper as he starts like he gets damaged and starts replacing parts of his um drone body and munitions and different parts with salvaged um technology from the Predator. so he like as the Predator becomes slightly more humanized uh sniper becomes slightly more predatorized and uh yeah there's these funny moments saying oh the Predator. it turns out this this guy is not actually bad he's quite an interesting person um person. Why am I saying person? It's not a person. It's a gribbly. It's a Predor. But no, I'm actually liking this kind of person. Person. Predor. Person. Um, yeah, so uh, I, yeah, enjoyed the book. But again, don't really have much else to say about it except like that setup. It's like, yeah, space battles. And if you like military science fiction slash space battles, you're going to get a lot of it. It's uh, it's kind of satisfying in some ways that that um, you like that they're always thinking about okay how many how much munitions have we got left where are we going to get more energy all these different kind of things and uh, and I do enjoy all of that kind of stuff it's very it, well pictured and worked out but it is then a little bit inaccessible to humans because the only human in the book um, who has any action or has any influence on the battle is a you know millennia old captain who's been rep- all the body parts have been replaced by um by the uh, you know the spatter J virus and can take bullets and be smashed up and as as long as he keeps eating his body will survive um you know except for complete annihilation but like it's part of him is going to um you know survive and and can grow back as a as a full human being as well the drones can do this the the predator themselves they can get legs blown off and you know it doesn't matter they'll re- regrow they replace parts of themselves over time anyway um so it's a bit un- inaccessible because the the predator are and all these different parts are a little bit too uh a little bit too invulnerable to understand when are they not vulnerable anymore. Like, oh, there's lots of battling going on, and then at the end, I guess they could either die or be invincible, and you're not, I'm not, wasn't always sure. I mean, I enjoyed it as it was going on, but, you know, thinking back, I was just like, well, who were we, like, what was the, where was the tension, like, where was it coming from? And of course, in the end, it's sort of like, actually not who dies or who lives or how much damage they sustain, but where they are taken and what choices they have to make later. Um... So, uh, yeah, that's it. Anything else? Let's have a look over here on the um, Goodreads page. Yes, this book. Oh, I normally talk do this at the start. Um, hardcover, 352 pages, like 14-hour audio book. Um, uh, published, first published April 9th, 2009. Um, so, not that old, I guess. Oh, no, that's almost 10 years old. <laughs> no, no, nine years old. Um... Uh, friend reviews. Oh, they haven't loaded f- for some reason. I'm not connected to the internet, but there you go. Um, so, community reviews. It's got a uh, a 4.18 rating. I think that's slightly high. But what happens with these books? Is that only the fans of the series read the third book in the series? Um, well, the, s- someone says here, I have to say I'm done with Spatter J. This one tipped the balance why I no longer cared about what happened in the story. It was all a bit too much. I feel like I'd just read a continuous story... Uh, a story about one continuous long battle with high-tech weaponry. It just didn't take a break to, and try to develop a story. Felt like it was a battle wrapped around some characters that were exactly the same as the previous books. So me, that's me done with Spatter Oh, weirdly enough, that's actually quite, what I quite uh, enjoyed about this here. Anyway, yeah, so lots of three-star, five-star, four-star ratings. I don't see anything less, much less than that. Again, it's the fans of the series are going to keep reading. Um... If you gave one star to the first book and one star to the second book, you're probably not even going to read the third book to give one star to. Um, what else? Uh, no, I, that's about it. Oh, yeah, the, the audiobook. Really, really great. Um, narrated by... Oh, man, I've already deleted I've already deleted the audio. I had to re, 
reinstall my phone because it all stopped working. Who was the who was the audiobook narrator? Let's say someone like Peter Kenny, really good narration. I I always like the different voices um, that they put on these. Uh, I know is it Peter? I think Peter Kenny is now reading a book that I'm I'm currently. Uh, Currently reading. Oh is that, no, no. So it must be. It must be Peter Kelly. Yeah. What I like about him is that uh, the the audio, uh, the um, accents that he gives the different characters, uh, like the the war drone sniper seems to be from somewhere in Yorkshire, which I uh, enjoy. The captains are sort of like uh, West Country accents, and uh, and then of course all of the the bad guys have various different sort of like upper class accents. In a in a very fun kind of like um, uh, yeah gribbly voice sort of sort of like and now I will do it and you go okay it's not very subtle maybe one day the gribbly aliens won't speak like this with very very grating voices <laughs> I shouldn't have done that I've been a bit ill which is why it's been a while since I've read this book and now I'm doing this podcast but yes um, sometimes I just think okay. Like, as the alien or the big bad gets bigger and badder, the voice gets lower and more gravelly and more English upper-class accent. Uh, yeah, there's only so far you can take that. Um, but I guess he, had, he he went on that course in the second book and then continued on with it. Anyway, I think that's all I've got to say about this book. Um, I guess if I'd have reviewed it a little bit closer to when I finished reading it, instead of, like, um, two weeks or whatever it's been, um, I'd probably remember more about it and have more to say. But uh, overall, I enjoyed it. It was a solid book. Three and a half stars. Not perfect. Um, but I don't really have all that much to... Um, complain about oh yeah there is one thing that i want to complain about at the end another kind of alien turns up and it's sort of like really important that this alien turns up and then i was like but what did they look like we were never it was never explained what they looked like and that seemed to be one of the most important things that they were another alien but it never it was never there never talked about it and i was like well who who are you shooting at there these things that are coming in and you're you, they come towards you you're like oh and he killed that soldier and killed that soldier and killed that alien soldier i was like what what were they what were those soldiers? Do we do we ever did we ever find out what they looked like? Anyway, that's it. Three and a half stars. Um, uh, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Luke Burridge. You can uh, follow me on Instagram. I'm at Luke Burridge there, and on YouTube as well. I'm Luke Burridge there. Check out my blog where I post everything uh, at LukeBurridge.com. Also, check out SFBRP.com. And then t- click on episode list, and there you can find every single episode that I've ever recorded in a nice sortable list. Um, you can sort by author and by book and by series and by star ratings that I give these books um, and by lots of other things too. And uh, so you can see it all. And there's an archive feed as well for the first 300 books that I reviewed Um because they kind of fall out of the iTunes feed and the website feed, um, RSS feed, whatever it is. So check out the archive feed if you want to uh, have an easy way to uh, check them out on your um, podcast player. Um, You can find that, copy and paste that link into your podcast um, player by by going to the uh, website and finding the archive feed in the episode list. Right, that's it for me. Thanks a lot for listening, and I'll catch you next time.